I find it mildly prophetic that as I sit down to make this video, I find a grinder packed to the brim with weed just left right there. I was never one of the people that could smoke weed. Um, I used to actually get jealous of the people that could. It makes me crazily paranoid. Um, I'm not sure if that's, you know, they say it's some sort of a genetic trait um, with uh, black people is that some people get paranoid, some people don't. But for me, I, what I realized is that the reason why weed made me paranoid was because I still hadn't really come to peace to a level of peace with myself that I could really allow myself to relax. And what we did is that it, it brought aspects of my personality to the fore and I, then I rejected it. So I became paranoid and turned in, turned in on myself. Luckily, I don't smoke and I haven't smoked for quite some time. What's up guys, Freeman here, welcome back to another video. So this is not a Misfits podcast where they literally talk about drugs all day and yet they're still the number one podcast on Spotify, hilariously. This is a video whereby I talk about no vape because I don't think I've really been giving it enough justice recently because as of now, I have currently broken my record. It's about no vape day 25, 26 and I have broken a record. I have never been this long without nicotine. It has been years since I've been long this long without nicotine. Back when I did my other fast, it was basically when I hadn't eaten for 60 days, check out that video. Um, I still was having nicotine and that was one of the main reasons why I failed on it because the moment I tried to quit nicotine I was l just coating my body with it. The withdrawal was impossible to contain. It was too much for me to do so I had to, I had to relapse on it but as of today it, I, I have broken my record for how long to go without nicotine and I just wanted to sit here and share a few reasons and secrets about what has really got me this far. It feels good. Like, let me just say it straight up, not having to rely on cigarettes, not, not having to rely on nicotine, it feels amazing. Just not only the fact that I have way more money, the fact that I have way more control, the fact that I can go um, out and not have to have that niggling want, 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 whenever they're going out. I remember back when I first started smoking, I was one of those idiots that got into smoking the wrong way. I wanted to be cool and hit with my friends, you know, fit in, and I got into the whole raving scene and I saw them smoking. So I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to teach myself how to smoke. Dumbest decision I ever made. Got, got into social smoking. And then from there, it just spiraled into chain smoking. And then eventually I had to start, I, I had to quit. I was one of those people who, if not for the fact that I was so insecure with my own being, I would probably wouldn't be smoking or drinking. But I guess that's the same thing for a lot of people. People sometimes just want to fit in. Anyway, those times are in the past. What I feel now is that the level of healing that, that I had to go through to get to this point right now whereby I can sit here and safely say that I have not felt any nicotine cravings for the last seven days. Saying that though, I'm not in any way going to let my guard down. As someone who's got to this point, um, I can say that I've gone through a lot of healing, not only physically, but also, but also psychologically. And I'm gonna start doing some proper health videos because I've got a long list of stuff to do. I've done a lot of healing, a lot of healing to be able to get to that. And the majority of the healing goes, this is the main secret to why I think I've actually gotten this far with psychological healing, because I realized that I was relying on nicotine to give me some sort of an edge off. I was basically relying on nicotine to be able to coat or somehow push back or somehow negate a part of my personality that I didn't actually want to experience. So in my case, the reason why quitting nicotine was so hard from an emotional perspective was because I was still filled with resentment. Honestly, I just hated, I hated everything. I hated, I hated my situation. I hated my health. I hated my parents. I, I helped, helped harbored a deep resentment to my um, NPD mother and everything that, that she had done. And what I didn't realize is that as I had gotten worse, I was relying on nicotine to be able to chase away that pain. Even deeper still, I basically was relying on the fact that I was being sick and relying on the fact that I was dependent on something. This is a very difficult concept to really talk about, but basically I, from a psychological, from a psychological perspective, I kept myself sick because I thought that staying sick would give me the attention that I never got as a kid basically that this is after years of really digging and doing some doing some real deep introspective meditation i realized that not only was the nicotine addictive because it gave you some sort of a release from the constant background level of of anxiety but i rationalized just as for example many many kids when they're um, neglected and they have parents that work a lot sometimes they basically they basically rationalize that the only way for them to actually get that sort of attention is by you know breaking stuff or making some sort of a problem in school so they will then make a problem in school and what will happen is that their parents will come in and then that to them is them getting the attention that they didn't actually get at home. 
Now, because of this, what basically happens is that parts of the psychology will then actively attempt to sabotage the rest of someone's actions, basically leading it to the point where you will find yourself you know, holding back or you'll, or you'll find yourself deliberately doing things that will basically either one, get you in trouble or two, slow down your actual progress to the point where you keep going around and around and around and around in circles. Which is why it took me close to three years to be able to quit nicotine because as I started to quit nicotine and as I started to get just better in general, what, what started to happen was the alarm bell started to, started to sound off in my head to say, wait, hold on, if I'm absolutely better, then I will never get the attention that I need. You see, that's just the way the hindbrain works. Like it or not, we are still living with the scars of our past. Most of what we are doing is basically living in a state of mild post-traumatic stress disorder. Like if you have problems with procrastination, if you have problems with self-sabotage, if you have problems being able to speak your mind, all of that is the old PTSD that we get from our environment, that, that we get from our, from, our, from our upbringing that defines our personality. We wonder why is it that we can't simply function properly. Now, as I started to understand and unpack that, I found the need to actually smoke really, really, really diminished. And part of that is because of you guys. Part of it was because I actually started my YouTube channel. And as I started my YouTube channel, what, what I found was that those parts of myself that I was keeping locked away, and because I was afraid of people seeing it, because they might reject me because of old PTSDs, as I got my own story out, as I got my own personality out, those, those negative aspects started to unravel. And what basically happened was that I no longer required the emotional release of nicotine to be able to hide me from the, that, that horrible reality that, that I thought would happen if I was to be myself and be open and be healthy and be honest. Now that's just a part of it. The other part of it was the physical health and, and this is the section that I think will r relate to most people. If not for the fact that I've been doing all these crazy cleanses, because I, I, I cleanse a lot guys, I do a lot of cleansing, I do a lot of healing and if not for the fact that I'd been doing all these cleanses, I think the quit and nicotine would have been a lot harder. Because I find the main reason why people sometimes take months, if not sometimes years to quit nicotine is that their bodies are so toxic that they can't actually get the nicotine out of their system. Because nicotine, it's not something that just goes out of our system really, really quickly. The same thing with alcohol. I remember when I was trying to quit alcohol, I would go to my uh, counselor who was helping me with alcohol and um, helping me, <laughs> helping me, no, helping me quit alcohol, not, not supplying me, that'd be kind of fucked up. Um, but no, she was helping me try and try to quit alcohol and what she would do is she'd sometimes give me a breathalyzer and there are times when I hadn't been drinking for at least two, three weeks and what would happen? She'd breathalyze test me and it'd be like, yeah, you have more alcohol than the day before than, than like a few weeks before when I was drinking. That blew my mind. The reason was is that the body will store these toxins up, the body will store these, these ills up and then it will slowly release them over time. And depending on how healthy you are, that is to say how healthy your liver is, how healthy your digestive system is, how open your sweat glands are, if you're not sweating or doing exercise or you know taking sweat baths, how, how um, if you have enough of the vitamins and minerals that basically help you to detoxify, that will, that will mediate how much nicotine is released from your system. So what you'll find is that as you start to quit nicotine, just as for me, as I, after I quit alcohol, there's more alcohol being expelled from my system. Once you actually start quitting nicotine, all the body says, all right, cool, the floodgates are open. Now we can get out all of this nicotine. So it dumps a lot of the nicotine into the bloodstream and you will find you'll start to get these cravings even afterwards, even afterwards, you get these cravings and cravings. This is the reason why it took me, it was so easy for me to, after I relapsed um, for my 12th day nicotine, the last one, um, the no nick, whatever the hell, um, 2018 December, after I relapsed, it was like that to actually get back on it. Why? Because my body, my, 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 my liver was functional, my digestive system was, was relatively clean, I was doing constant, I was doing other sorts of cleanses and, and, and you know, stuff like that. So once I did actually resume with the whole thing, the body was like, well, the floodgates are open, there's no backing up of toxins, because that's, that's what happens, is that toxins, including nicotine, the alcohol, will back up in the system because the, the methods of detoxifying are not open. So it will back up in the system and then it will leach back into it will leach back into the bloodstream, causing massive cravings for nicotine at random opportune moments. You know, at, at inopportune moments, I would say. So at random occasions, all start to feel as if, oh, well, I, I really need this. I really need that. Oh my God, I, I, I haven't had a, I haven't had a vape in such a long period of time, and now all of a sudden, I don't need a vape anymore. So, it's stuff like that. Is the, that that so? So from the physical side, it is very easy to be able to facilitate the detox. This is why I can say with increasing certainty that I don't think that I will be relapsing. The stress, the emotional stress is also gone as well. I've, I've done a lot of sorting out my own home affairs to be able to make it so that I have a stress-free environment. And all sorts of other things had to come into line for me to finally be able to say that I have broken a record, I feel great, I feel amazing, and I only see light ahead of me. I mean, like I said, even if I were to relapse, it would be like that to try and get back on again. But there is no desire for me to. Like, believe it or not, I still have my old vape. I threw away my other vape. I literally discovered another one. I have had no cravings for it.
I've had no... People offered me cigarettes. I think the last time I was close to relapsing was about about two, three days ago when I was recounting a story about what happened a week ago when someone offered me a whole, a whole pack of cigarettes. That was after work, it was stressful, but I still managed to be like, no, you know, because if someone hands you, if you're trying to quit nicotine and someone literally just hands you a, like 12 pack of, you know, you know, Marlboros, like that is a fight, that is a fight. Still, it was a fight that I managed to win. It was just literally just like, no, get it away from me. One minute of tensing, one minute of butt sheet, you know, teeth grinding, and then it was fine. <laughs> and then after that, um, as, I, as I said, as I started to sort out, as I started to sort out my, own, my own affairs and I've got more structure in my life, it's become a lot easier to do it. So anyway, that's, that's all I'm going to say. Um, hopefully this made sense. I'm going to be doing a video, more videos on tips to how to actually overcome the nicotine cravings just, ju just from a physical standpoint, because as I said, I have talked about, you know, getting your cleaning out your system and stuff like that. There's also certain supplements like L-glutamine, vitamin C, magnesium and uh, practices like exercise which will also really really help to reduce those nicotine cravings i'll talk about all that in a future video on my add it to my massive pile of health videos that i still need to do and that's all i'm gonna say november day 26 free me out peace